Welcome to the special Halloween edition of Draw This. In this episode, we're going to be drawing candy corn. For the record, I think candy corn is disgusting. I'd rather eat a can of actual corn than this crap. Be a candy corn, you suck at being candy, but you're even worse at being corn. I think I just threw up in my beak a little bit. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with our drawing. I'm drawing here in Corel Painter, but you could use any application that you like. I'm using the symmetry or mirror painting tool to help me draw my candy corn symmetrically. And it's basically kind of a long wedge or triangle shape with rounded corners. If it helps, you can rotate your canvas. I'm doing that here to help me draw that curve a little bit more easily. And I'm not gonna be afraid to undo or use my eraser as much as I need to, to help me get the exact candy corn shape that I want here. Now, if I was smart, what I would have done is I would have put the sketch on a separate layer, but I forgot to, so I'm just gonna go ahead and cut and paste that sketch onto a new layer and set it to multiply. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off symmetry painting and I'll continue sketching. I'll draw on the areas where the yellow, orange, and white are on the candy corn, and I'll even draw on the little highlight. I'll create a new layer now, turn symmetry painting back on. And I'm gonna use an opaque, flat, smooth brush like this. This is called the smooth scratch board just to fill in the candy corn shape there. Next, I'll select the pinch brush and I'll go ahead and just pinch right along the edge just to kind of sculpt this and shape it into a more appropriate shape. And that just pinches all the pixels together and it's kind of like sculpting with clay. Something like that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and hide my sketch by clicking on the eyeball. Then I'll go ahead and continue pinching this just to smooth it out. I wanna make sure it's looking nice and even. And then I'll go through with symmetry turned off and I'll make it a little asymmetrical in a couple places because the candy corn isn't gonna be absolutely perfect. It's just a blob of corn syrup and wax. I'm gonna go ahead and name that base layer, base shape. And I'll go ahead and turn on preserve transparency and I'll make sure to just go ahead and fill that just in case there was any fringe along the edge from pinching it. Now I'm going to select a yellowish color and with preserve transparency turned on, I'll use the airbrush just to draw in the yellow end of the candy corn here and just make sure it kind of smoothly fades into that orange. I'm gonna select kind of a light cream color like this, almost a flush tone, and I'll use that for the lighter end of the candy corn. I'll add a little bit of transition of a kind of a golden color in between the orange and the flush color, and then I'll add in a white highlight on the very end of the candy corn there, and just to make sure it's very bright in the center and it kind of fades out from there. Next, I'm gonna right click on the base shape layer, choose select layer content, then create a new layer above it, call it shadows, set it to multiply, and then I'll use the airbrush to go ahead and paint in along the edge just to add some three-dimensional form to this candy corn. So I'm just painting with kind of a reddish orange color, very similar to what I'm using in the candy corn itself, and painting with the edge of the airbrush right along the edge of the candy corn. Now I'll go ahead and create another new layer and I'll call it highlights. I'll set the composite method to screen, and I'll use a yellowish color, similar to what we're using in the candy corn, to put in some highlights on the top side. Our light is coming from the top right in this scenario, so that's gonna be the lightest area of the candy corn is the top and the right side. The shadows would be on the bottom left. The candy corn is not flat, it bulges out a little bit, and so adding this highlight near the top side with the airbrush really helps it to look more three-dimensional. Using lighter colors makes the three-dimensional object look like it's curving or bulging towards you. If you want something to look like it's moving away from you, then you'll want to use a darker color. And you can see when I use dark on the edge, it makes it look like the edge is curving away from us. If I use that light color, it makes it look like it's kind of bulging up. I'm gonna sample some colors from within my piece here and just try to help transition some of the colors together and help them look not so flat. And then next I wanna blend a little bit using the coarse oily blender. Now the coarse oily blender works in tandem with your paper texture. So the texture I'm using here is simulated wood grain and you can play with the scale and the size of the texture. You can also play with the flow map and that'll give you some more texture as well. So you can have two different levels of texture. And I'm using this just to blend over some of the areas where the color transitions together. That helps to kind of transition the colors in a more natural way, but it also adds some texture to the candy corn. And you can experiment with these other blenders as well. Some of them will give you different results. For example, I'm using the grainy blender now. That's a lot more grainy of a result. Kind of looks a little more painterly that way, I think. And I'll switch to the diffuse blur and I'll lightly blur over everything with that just to soften it and knock it back and remove some of that harshness. Now, if you overblend, you can always select Distorto and you can kind of push and smudge your paint around and that'll help sharpen it up. You can sculpt it into any kind of shape you want. In applications like Photoshop, this is known as Liquify. And it really just helps to add more sharpness to your piece. 
and it helps it look a little more like reflective waxy candy. The next step is to add some textures and fine details. You could use a chalk brush or an oily pastel. I'm going to use my custom brush called oily pastel. And I just want to put in a few little imperfections on here. Maybe these are little raised areas or little cracks and crevices and things like that. Areas that catch the light, areas that catch shadows. And all of this little detail just really helps to make a difference. Normally, you wouldn't look at a candy corn this close. This is a very magnified view. But even though we're adding all this information, it'll still kind of break down when we look at it smaller and it'll make sense. Now, you might be thinking at this point, it looks like candy corn. Why keep adding more detail to it? What's the point in that? Well, if you want something to look very photorealistic, then you need to put in all these extra details. Otherwise, it's going to look unfinished. And all these details are there. I'm using a reference photo of a candy corn. And in that reference photo, all this stuff is present. And so I'm just trying to have a very, very keen eye for that. For example, if you look very, very close at the texture of a candy corn, it's all these little small, fine, speckled textures. So I'm going to use the select layer content trick, and then I'm going to create a new layer, set it to overlay, and use the pepper spray brush to spray in some little speckles. You can change the feature size of the pepper spray to get bigger or finer speckles. I'll do that maybe on a couple of layers, one with some dark and one with some light, and maybe one with some bigger speckles, and just spray in a little bit here and there and everywhere. And that'll help it look like it's actual candy texture. I might reduce the opacity of those layers a bit too, just to help find a more subtle blend for each of them. And then I'll merge those layers down with the candy corn using Control E. Then I'll blend over it a little bit to soften it following the contours or the form of the candy corn using the Diffuse Blur Blender, just to soften some of that a bit so it's not too apparent. Next, it might be nice to add some three-dimensional ripples and wrinkles. And a great way to do that is to create a new thick paint layer, choose a neutral gray, and set the layer to overlay, and then simply paint. If you use lighter pressure, you can scrape away paint. If you use firmer pressure, you can build up paint. The brush that I'm using here is a custom brush called Broken Paint, and you can create additional thick paint layers to build up the texture. If you change your paper texture as well, you're going to get different textures within your texture of your thick paint. So I'm just going to build it up in a couple places. You can see that creates highlights and shadows. You can also go to Canvas Surface Lighting, and you can change the angle of your light if you need to so it matches your composition. I'll reduce the opacity of those layers to find a more subtle blend, and then I'll go ahead and just merge them down with the candy corn layer and blend it a little bit using Diffuse Blur. I'm going to go back in with my digital airbrush and just add in a few more little details here and there. I'm going to add some more contrast using a Stencil Flow Matte Messy Dab brush, which is a glazing brush, and that's basically just darkening it on the top and the bottom so that it creates more of a shiny reflection. I'll also use it to fade that white color into the orange. And then I'll select the bulge brush and I'll just bulge a little bit more just to help push this around and help it look, again, a little bit more waxy or a little bit more reflective in some areas. Now let's add a drop shadow so this doesn't look like a bad Photoshop product shot. I'm going to duplicate the corn layer and on the bottommost layer I'll just move it moving away from my highlight so that our shadow looks like it's being cast by the light source. And I'll just turn on Preserve Transparency and fill that with kind of a blue-gray color. Then I'll go to Effects, Focus, Soften, and set the aperture to circular and create a blur to blur the edge of that shadow. I'll reduce the opacity a bit and maybe just move it around and transform it and just make sure that it fits perfectly there. That looks pretty good. I might even blend it a little bit with Diffuse Blur and then I'll tint it a little bit after turning on transparency just to tint the top edge a little bit of that orange color and maybe make it a little bit brighter and a little bit darker in some areas. Now I'm going to start cleaning up the piece a little bit, and that's just looking at the reference photo and looking for any mistakes or anything that I can improve upon. You don't have to copy your reference photo exactly, in fact. I made my piece look a lot better than the reference photo ended up looking, so feel free to use artistic license here and do whatever you want with your candy corn. But I'm just kind of doing a mix between matching it to the reference image and making it meet my vision. I'm just using a lot of those same brushes that I've been using earlier. I'm going to create a new layer after creating a selection of my object and tint over a little bit with a multiply layer and yellow because I just want to saturate the yellow area and that transition between the white and the orange. It just helps it look like a more appropriate color. Next, I'm going to create a new layer and I'll just use it just to kind of clean up the edges a little bit. I feel like I went a little too strong with the shadows there, so I'm going to knock those back just a little bit. The reason why I'm doing this stuff separately on layers is because if I mess it up, then I'm not risking destroying any of the work that I did on the layers underneath. And so it's just a free and easy way to experiment. 
Now let's add some more lumpy texture. I'm going to create a new thick paint layer and I'm going to change my paper texture to bumpy skin. You could use any kind of lumpy paper texture. I'll select that same neutral gray color and set the layer to overlay for its composite method. And what that does is that makes the gray disappear and it only shows the light and dark areas. So I'll just create some more bumps along the borders where those colors transition to each other. And just in a few places here and there where there's highlights and things like that. And that adds a little bit of lumpiness and a little bit of texture to our candy corn. We can reduce the opacity of that layer and we can even convert it to a default layer and then just blend it using Diffuse Blur to lightly blend away some of it and just help it mix in. I'm gonna duplicate my shadow now and I'm going to go ahead and just move that up so it's kind of in between the candy corn and the edge of the shadow. That creates kind of two layers of shadows and just helps the shadow look more natural. I'll merge the shadow layers together with Control E and just set the composite method back to multiply. And then I'll fuse those two layers together where they meet using Diffuse Blur. Next, I'm going to go to the canvas layer and I'm going to tone the canvas a light gray color. This will help the lighter parts of the candy corn stand out and it'll just help it look more natural. But I don't want to go too dark, so it's going to be just an almost white like this. I'm going to go ahead and merge my candy corn layers down into a single layer, turn on Preserve Transparency, and then I'll use some of that background color just to create some reflections by painting along the top and bottom edge. Those edges are curving away from us, curving towards that table or whatever the candy corn is sitting on. And so it's reflecting a little bit of color from the table or from the objects surrounding it or even from the light. Let's use select layer content to get a selection of the corn and create a new layer on top. We'll set it to multiply. And I want to go through with kind of a medium orange color and just bring out some more of those curved shadow edges along the bottom left and the bottom of the candy corn and just help it look more three dimensional. Another thing I can do is deselect my selection, go ahead and merge that shadow layer down with the candy corn, and then use the blur blender to blend right along the edges. That's going to soften the edges because those edges are moving away from us in three dimensional space. They should get more out of focus. Now that's going to create kind of a weird fringe along the edges, so you can just use bulge or distorto just to push those pixels over the edge just to kind of make them go away. You can also bulge the center of your candy corn if you want just to make it look more three dimensional. I'll go ahead and just save a copy of my artwork here as a PSD. And I'm going to open this in Photoshop. This is kind of an optional step. And then I'm going to flatten all my layers and go to Blur Gallery Tilt Shift and create a tilt shift blur that'll help this look like a miniature photograph. I'll also create a new layer for a vignette, set it to a multiply blend mode or composite method, fill it with black, and then I'll add a mask to that layer and use a radial gradient with black to mask away some of that vignette that I added so that the vignette's only on the bottom left and it kind of fades away as we go towards the top right. That way it looks like it's darker where it should be darker and lighter where it should be lighter. I'll go ahead and create a color balance layer effect as well, and I'll just add a little bit of color flavor to the midtones and shadows. I'll zoom out really far and this helps me evaluate the candy corn at a normal scale, and I'll just play with the balance of those layers until I get something I like. And I think with that, we have a finished candy corn. If you enjoyed this drawing, take a quick second to like this video. And if you're new to my channel, I'd love to have you subscribe. I have a lot more digital art videos for artists like you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.